Hello, thank you for joining me. So this is our video number three in our series uh, how to put a uh, drawing together in regard to our SOLIDWORKS part that we're, uh, that we're using right now. You know, our SOLIDWORKS part is our, in my assembly, the lower gauge wheel arm assembly. You know, it, it consists of a number of different parts, but it too can be considered a part. Uh, everything's going to be welded together in this part, but that's, uh, that's just kind of a side. Uh, you're going to be putting together your part. And one thing to think about um, in regard to doing this, uh, putting your, your drawing together, I'm showing you a lot more details in these uh, videos and uh, what you really need to put into your part, but this is here for uh, future reference if you, need to, uh, if you need to use it. So what we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to be showing you how to put to, I'm going to be showing you how to put to, together different views. We're going to put in an auxiliary view on this face with the desire with that view is to kind of show a little bit more clearly uh, the, whole, the holes that are here and uh, the spacing on those holes so we know how to put those together. We do a section view on our top view and we're going to put that off to the side. We're going to do some detail views uh, on various elements in here too. The desire here at this point of our uh, putting together our drawing is we want to put these uh, different views in here to kind of line up our uh, our drawing to make sure the scale is right, that we have an adequate amount of uh, open space between the views that we show uh, a decent amount of, uh, and that we scale it in such a manner that we show a decent amount of detail in there, but don't overcrowd the drawing. So there's kind of a fine line between uh, having too little detail with too small of a scale to having something that's uh, too big, a uh, scale that's too big, and you know, it gets really crowded and you can't really read it. So the desire here is to make a very easily read drawing and um, show you how to put something like that together. So we're going to put our views together. And um, you know, let's just go up to our uh, view layout toolbar and start from the left and work our way to the right. We have a standard three views, uh, standard view, three views. You may have already used this, so we'll put in our front top right view. And uh, simply by clicking on that will give us, uh, by clicking on the part that we want to put in, it will give us those views. I think you're pretty familiar with that, a model view. Model view allows us to pick a uh, part that's, you know, for instance, this part that's already open. And if we go to the blue arrow up here, we can pick uh, that specific view that we want to put in. So, just for the final, let's go ahead and put in a back view and put it next to this view. Let me show you a couple things about this. One thing to look at is that uh, the view is a little bit different. We know that there's a, a curvature to the beams we put in here in regard to, uh, you know, the you know the structural elements we put together into our part here. And if you look at this really close, you know that orange line here and this orange line here represents a tangent edge. It goes from a flat surface up here to a rounded surface here, back to a flat surface again, and they intersect at that edge. And we can make that edge show or not show. And that edge is called a tangent edge. So in this view, uh, our tangent edge is visible, and the way you get that is you go to your uh, options on your pull down menu, go to system options this time, and uh, what you want to do is go to display style under your drawings, and uh, you might want to change this. Right now it's probably removed for you, but uh, you can either make it visible, which will make it a solid line, or you can tell it to use a font, and the font by default is a phantom line, I believe, and then if you go to OK, it should get that set up. Uh, what we don't have it in this view. I like the way this looks because it gives the impression that there, there is a curved uh, surface here, whereas here it's really unclear what we're looking at. So let's click in that view. Let's right click, and there's an option in here called Tangent Edge. We can do a Tangent Edge, uh, make them visible. And what it does is it gives a solid line. I don't think that's as quite as clear as if we were to make a Tangent Edge visible with font, or tangent, tangent edge with font, so now that resembles more like this. It's a gray line in the background, phantom line, and I think it's a lot more clear if we did it that way. When you put in views, you also want to make sure that your views are put in uh, perhaps matching your um, sheet scale. And right now this uh, got put in as a 1 to 10 scale, but let's go ahead and do this. Let's make sure it's on the sheet scale, and we'll put it in that way. So now it's the same size as the other one. It, there, is no, it, there is no alignment here, and if uh, you look at some of your other views, uh, your front view here drives the alignment of these other views, or these are actually aligned. So if you look at this, when you move your front view around, you notice you do have a phantom line that connects the other two views, the right view and the top view associated with that. Uh, we can take that alignment and break it and add uh, to it if we wanted to do that. So. Uh, regard to the front view, if we move the front view around, uh, your right and top views uh, move with it, and you have do you do have some limited mobility with your top and uh, right views. 
Now with this one, it's completely mobile. We can move that anywhere we like. We want to establish alignment to it. You just simply right click in that area that defines uh, the border where that view is. Go to alignment and we can align perhaps appropriately horizontal by origin or horizontal by center. It's the same part, so we're going to do horizontal by origin and we're going to align it to that. So then that view is locked into place with some limited mo mobility left and right to our front view. And if we want to break that alignment, just go back to alignment, break alignment, and now it's free again. Just uh, some things you might consider when you're putting your views together. I don't want a back view, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that. But what I do want, eventually, is uh, an auxiliary view. So we did three, a standard three view, model view up here, projected view. is going to be, uh, if we did a projected view, let's go ahead and talk about that real quick. If we were to click on uh, one of our other views, we can do a projected view off that view. For instance, it would consider this like being uh, maybe the front view. If we did a projected view off of that, then we could do the right view to that top view, uh, the left view to the top view, you know, the, the top view to the top view, which is like the bottom view, and so on and so forth. One advantage of doing this is it gives you a different perspective on the four different uh, isometric views that you could choose. So it'll give you a couple different options here in regard to getting different isometric views and uh, maybe some other views too. So that's what a, proje a projected view does. And of course, if you just had the front view, we really want to make a really quick right view or a top view, that's uh, convenient to do it that way. So our auxiliary view, let's put in an auxiliary view. I can do an auxiliary view on this edge. And what it's asking for here is a rectangle or a reference edge. I'm going to click on this edge for that view. And it automatically pops that into place. And what it does is it's looking directly down and it's 90 degrees right on that view. And with the desire of being able to get some decent dimensions off of uh, off this plate. That combines that top part and the bottom part of our uh, assembly here. We have a view tile that's associated with it. And we also have uh, what looks like a section line that's associated with it. Our section line, you can't really put on a different uh, or a, a different layer, but we can with our view title do that. We typically want our view titles to be on our view title layer or our sheet notes layer. So if we click on that annotation text up here, so to go in none, let's go to sheet notes, and instead of using the document font, let's go to just click on the font button. But the only thing we want to change is the underline. So all of our sheet views, all of our view titles are going to be underlined on our uh, sheet notes layer. That could be changed, but this can't. For some reason it stays on none no matter what uh, view you choose, so no matter what layer we choose. So that's going to remain a black line. And that typically goes against convention because typically your dark lines on here are all your object lines. Everything else is, uh, is uh, auxiliary to that. And it's going to be typically uh, either a lighter line type or it's going to be a uh, grayscale. So it's going to appear to be uh, somewhat in the background, if you think about it that way. C is not an appropriate view. So let's go ahead and click in that line, or we can click in the view. And let's change that value to A. Uh, what SolidWorks does is it provides uh, letters and numbers in a sequential manner, whether that view, whether it be a section view, detail view, an auxiliary view, whatever view it might be, whether you have that view in there or not, we can put in uh, like three or four different auxiliary views and erase them all. When we put in our fifth one, then it's going to be uh, you know the letter E. So you know, I got to keep that in mind. So you can change this, and then we're going to make our first view uh, view A. So that's probably enough for this film. In the next film, we're going to go ahead and put a section view in this and some detail views with the expectation in later films of putting in some dimensions.